I have to admit, this is not typically my sort of thing. I have a little bit of social anxiety. Um, I'm here because I, I'm really excited about what we did um, over the past year at, at CrowdStrike with TLA+. Plus. Um, and I really wanted to share it with, with all of you. Um, so the, I'm, you might ask what this talk is about. Um, I'm going to spend a little bit of time talking about um, CrowdStrike as a company, what, what CrowdStrike does, um, but really with a focus on where TLA Plus might be useful. Um, and that sort of leads into the second topic, where might TLA Plus be used at CrowdStrike? There are many, many different, uh, different scenarios where, where, where it could be useful. And then um, really the, the most important part of the talk, how have we used it um, both over the past year and, and previously? And then lastly, I'm going to just talk a little bit about where things are, where things are now and uh, what, what has been successful for us. So first about CrowdStrike. So this is really just a, a, a screenshot of, of our uh, external website. Um, and that, that, uh, uh, that motto that uh, We Stop Breaches is exactly what we do. Uh, CrowdStrike, um, uh, um, CrowdStrike uh, stops uh, malicious intrusion into our, um, into our customers' uh, organizations. We have customers in, in industry and in government. Um, CrowdStrike is a, a, a leader in uh, endpoint protection that includes a number of distinct capabilities um, that include, uh, so uh, next generation antivirus, which is uh, essentially the incorporation of, of uh, um, detection strategies beyond sort of the sort of traditional uh, static signatures on, on executables. Uh, it also includes uh, endpoint detection and response. Which is the which is providing uh, providing uh, a broad, rich stream of information to um, to both humans and automated response uh, systems, and lastly, it, it includes managed threat hunting, which um, in our case um, is a, a dedicated team of security professionals who use uh, who use the the rich stream of information uh, provided by uh, provided by um, our EDR capability to, uh, um, to look for uh, uh, new and unexpected uh, intrusions into our customer systems. So uh, enabling this is, uh, is the architecture that is used throughout our system. And again, I'm, I'm really going to focus on this as a very, very high level, um, really to just talk about the different places where TLA Plus might be used. Um, so, we have a, a hybrid execution model, and by hybrid I mean we have uh, we have logic flows in in the cloud, and we also have uh, we also have uh, logic that executes natively on the sensors at the endpoints where we monitor. Um, that uh, that set of sensors is itself heterogeneous, so um, we support multiple platforms. Um, and then you can imagine that different, different versions also have different capabilities that we have to manage. Um, this, is all, um, uh, this is all integrated through, a, through, an, through a, an event driven architecture where we have, um, where um, the events are immutable. And in the past slide, uh, the past slide depicted communication between, um, between a cloud and uh, and various sensors, but uh, it's important to note that in our architecture, that event model is, is universal. So we have, um, not only is that event model used to communicate between large subsystems, but also in, within those subsystems themselves. So this is a stylized rendering of, of uh, the architecture of, of uh, inside one of our sensors, and you can see the, the event exchange that, that, is, that, that occurs. So there are, um, across our system, there are many opportunities for, um, for independent updates. So um, their uh, sensors may be, may be updated, new sensors may, be, may come online, new components in our cloud may be deployed, um, persistent data may be exchanged between, this, between the sensor and the cloud, 
and all of this is happening while managing multiple concurrent event flows. So there are multiple, um, there are certainly, um, there are certainly many opportunities to, um, uh, there are many opportunities to, um, uh, uh, there are many situations where, uh, where concurrency is, is rampant in our system. Um, other examples that might, that beyond what I've talked, uh, beyond those that were, that really fall out of the architectural design, um, the, uh, the data model, how our data model changes and how those changes themselves propagate through the system. So as I mentioned, we have an immutable event model, but of course we are adding events all the time, um, uh, both internally and to support um, and to support uh, um, and to support our customers, and how that event model changes through time is another area where TLA Plus could be useful. Um, we could uh, 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 modeling upgrade and downgrade cycles, particularly those with persisted persisted data, assessing, uh, validating that that the behavior that we expect is is still um, is still occurring when we expect it. Um, we have a number of components in, in both regimes that, that have inherent concurrency. And um, another, another case is um, uh, uh, verifying that our expectations around the, um, the execution context that, that occur in, in certain cases on, um, uh, on certain cases within, uh, within the, uh, within the uh, event flows that occur on our on our endpoint sensors. Um, some of those interact very, very tightly with, uh, with the native operating system and um, ensuring that, that all the activity that occurs is, is safe um, is, another, is another way that uh, where we could use TLA plus. So at CS, we have a number, at, at, at CrowdStrike, we have a number of, um, we have a number of, of strategies that are in common use. For, for ensuring that, that uh, um, uh, what we build has a, high, uh, has a high degree of quality that includes um, things that you'd expect like unit testing, functional testing, uh, fuzzing in certain cases, property-based testing, static analysis. Um, uh, we also use, um, in addition to peer review for certain projects, we use pairing. Um, in, certain, uh, in certain domains, we have domain-specific languages to, uh, to ensure that, uh, that um, only, only, safe, only um, safe constructs are, uh, are expressed. Um, we use uh, typing and data modeling. Uh, in certain domains, we also use strongly typed languages. And um, in some cases, formal modeling, um, not, not limited to TLA+. So um, many of these that I mentioned are really focused on, on assessing the quality within a finished implementation. And um, that of course requires that you have a finished implementation, that you've gone through that, that engineering work, um, and not as many focus on the evaluation of, of a design or of the algorithm that goes into that design. And that's some place where, um, where at least in our experience, TLA plus really really shined because with limited effort you can you can assess the validity of of a proposed uh, of a proposed design without expending without um, without uh, without expending the engineering effort of, of building a whole uh, building a, a full implementation and relying on the comprehensiveness of say um, um, a unit test, um, a unit test suite, or a functional test suite. So, um, prior to this year, we did have uh, CrowdStrike uh, did have some small experience with TLA plus. There were two small projects. Um, the first was a uh, was a specification for um, a, a, a concurrent piece of of logic on the sensor, and the second was a. Uh, a spec for uh, um, the exchange of some shared context between uh, one of our sensors and the cloud. Um, this, this first project is, uh, was used for uh, process prevention on the sensor. And by process prevention, I mean the, the ability of the, of the sensor itself to, uh, to prevent the execution of processes that are, that are believed to be malicious. 
And um, uh, one, of the, one of the things, one of the aspects of this that make it really complex is how the decision is determined. So there are many sources of information that go into making this decision. Uh, prior behavior uh, of, uh, of associated executables on the sensor, uh, human annotation, um, local and cloud-based uh, machine learning models. And um, so if you can imagine that all of these sources of information are arriving at different times, um, where TLA plus is, is, is incredibly useful, is, is validating that um, regardless of the, the order of execution um, or in some cases even the completeness of information, uh, the, uh, the overall system actually uh, results in the right, right decision every time. So in the case of this project, there was a, uh, the, there was a small week-long effort to, uh, to focus on the portion of the system that where, um, where the sensor and the cloud were in communication. And uh, in that week's time, uh, three potential problems were identified and, and then corrected. So the second, the second prior, the second, uh, the second use of TLA plus before this year was um, in a detections classification project. So, um, and this focused on uh, modeling a part of the system uh, early on in design bef uh, before, um, before. Uh, actually before the bulk of the design work had happened and even before any implementation had started, um, it focused on, uh, on essentially updating the state of, of knowledge on the sensor from a number of, of different cloud systems. And uh, that, that effort identified a potential race condition that we were then able to design around. And all in all, I think the, the real um, uh, uh, the real benefit of this effort was that it, it established that uh, how useful TLA plus was as a tool for validating design and how appropriate the use of TLA plus in that, at that part of our development cycle could be. So even so, we had these smaller projects, um, uh, but there was still, there's still some impediment to uh, um, larger adoption of TLA plus at CrowdStrike. Um, we had, even with these small projects, we had a fairly small user base with, with, that had experience with TLA+, um, probably fewer than uh, half a dozen, maybe even, maybe even less than that. Um, we also had, um, uh, TLA+, Plus also has a reputation as a formal modeling system, and while there are um, small groups within, uh, within CrowdStrike that are familiar with formal modeling systems, in general, sometimes uh, formal modeling systems do have a reputation of, for, for being difficult to learn or requiring specialized knowledge um, or uh, to, be, to really um, achieve efficacy on, on practical problems. Um, there's also just the general belief that, that even once, uh, even with, uh, with, uh, with skilled practitioners, Formal modeling can take uh, a great deal of time, um, and of course, in any in any large engineering project, you're balancing um, you're you're balancing um, deadlines and requirements uh, um, against uh, against what you want to accomplish. Um, and then there's the very practical issue of for those cases where where a TLA spec models um, the behavior of of a, of a working implementation. Um, how, how one might maintain synchronization between that, that, uh, between that spec or those specs and the corresponding implementation. Uh, there's always the possibility that those two things can drift and, and certainly when that happens, the, the validity, the utility of the model uh, begins to degrade. And even with all of these, and even with these impediments, uh, we had uh, concrete examples in TLA Plus, as I mentioned, that uh, that showed uh, a very small investment in time could identify issues that were that were meaningful, um, and um, and that investment could be um, could be smaller than than what we uh, than um, than other ways in which the same issues were identified. Um, 
Additionally, we also uh, institutionally knew, knew that certain parts of our system were not necessarily as amenable to, to testing with, with all of the methods that I listed. Um, and, uh, um, but uh, building a TLA specification of the model uh, of the system is, a, was, is certainly a way that we can, we can assess uh, correctness in those parts of our system. Um, so, um, even despite these impediment, uh, these impediments, um, uh, early, or I should say, late last year, there was the opportunity to uh, um, to refactor a, a fairly large subsystem, uh, and um, that that subsystem uh, across years had exhibited a. A handful of, of fairly difficult to reproduce race conditions, um, and hunting down those those race conditions usually took weeks or more. Uh, reproducing them, fixing them, uh, uh, verifying that they could be that they were indeed uh, resolved, um, and uh, the re the the refactoring effort for this was was such that uh, um, we we wanted to be sure that that. There was a, a, a strong, uh, a strong desire to be to be certain that we weren't introducing new um, new race conditions into the into the system as we refactor it. The, the complexity of the system wasn't going to go down, um, so um, that was um, that provided uh, an, an opportunity to really integrate TLA plus into our development process. Um, and so the initial steps in, in integrating TLA plus involved uh, um, engaging our upper management with um, uh, talking about our past successes, uh, even though um, we're really only relying on the, the two smaller projects, they, what they showed was, was quite compelling. Um, and in our case, the, the need to uh, the desire to, to rebuild the system was very high. So um, another initial step that we, that we took was, um, and I say we because I was part of this, this project team, um, we, uh, to ensure success with TLA+, Plus, um, we, um, uh, we uh, held an, uh, a workshop with, uh, with Hill Wayne um, that had uh, a number of uh, that had a number of benefits. So um, including providing a uniform foundation for everyone on the project. Uh, it, uh, having a workshop where we all learn together uh, also display, also dispelled the lagging concerns that, that's, that some people on the project had that, that uh, we could all be productive in TLA+. Plus. I, I don't think there was any any doubt that TLA Plus was, the, was an appropriate tool for accomplishing our needs, um, but there was a strong, uh, um, some members of the project did, were concerned that, that given that it is a formal modeling system, that, that uh, uh, we would not, that uh, it would be very difficult to build the level of expertise needed to, to, uh, to employ it effectively. Um, lastly, in the context of our, of our workshop, we were able to work through um, real, uh, real scenarios uh, at CrowdStrike with uh, someone with, a, with an expert level of, of TLA plus knowledge. And that was, that was also very useful, um, again, for demonstrating how applicable TLA plus could be to our, to our problem domain. So, but even before we, we planned the workshop, um, those of us involved in the project realized that, that uh, um, realized the necessity of having a community of TLA plus users at CrowdStrike. Um, that would, having that community is, would be important not only for the long-term viability of, of this project and the associated specs, but also for really strategic, uh, strategic planning. Um, there are many places where TLA plus is, is applicable. Modeling can be relatively uh, low effort, uh, and, um, and it, helps, it helps to avoid some, some, some of the most difficult to diagnose problems in the field. 
So um, we were, so in thinking about how we might build that community, um, we focused on, on really four things, and two of them were really to, to demonstrate the value of TLA Plus at CrowdStrike, and then the other two were really to lower the barrier to, uh, to entry for our colleagues. Um, the first, we wanted to demonstrate the efficacy of, of TLA Plus in a large project, and um, the project that I mentioned in the past few slides is that project. Um, secondly, I wanted to show that TLA Plus could be useful even with limited investment on a larger scale. Um, as for lowering the barrier to entry, we wanted to provide more resources using TLA Plus at CrowdStrike. So um, uh, many uh, uh, demonstrate how TLA Plus could be applied to the systems and the idioms that we use internally uh, in the various, the various teams within our engineering organization. And then lastly, um, we uh, wanted to hold a peer-to-peer -peer workshop to introduce TLA Plus uh, to a group within, within our, our engineering organization. Um, so one of the, so as, as, uh, as a way of providing more resources, we aimed to build a TLA Plus zoo. And by zoo, I mean a library of, of small, very simple and targeted TLA Plus examples in CrowdStrike idioms. So, um, and we even focused on, on building this, this zoo with, with an example during, um, during the, the workshop with Hill. Um, ultimately, that zoo, resulted, that zoo effort resulted in a, um, a wiki page, a very nice wiki page with expandable descriptions um, and a dedicated repository so that the examples are really treated like any other important uh, IP. Um, and then even beyond that, we, we planned and, and held our internal workshop. Um, to do this, we took advantage of, of something called Think Week, which is a, a CrowdStrike company initiative. Um, during Think Week, uh, um, Think Week is an opportunity for, uh, for uh, grassroots development, uh, bottoms up development, um, where um, uh, anyone, even outside of engineering, can propose a project, recruit colleagues, and set aside any other, um, any other responsibilities that they might have for a full week, and really just focus on that, on that project. And so for the, the, the four of us that participated in uh, Hill's workshop, our Think Week project was this internal, work, was this internal workshop. Um, and uh, we thought that this, this internal workshop could serve multiple goals. It could build our internal user base. It could work through some real problems at CS, at, at CrowdStrike, and um, and it could also build up our our, our model zoo. Uh, ideally, um, this is really uh, a hope going in. We weren't completely sure uh, that that we could achieve this, but ideally, we would also like to. We we're also hoping to demonstrate that even with minimal training, our our colleagues could be productive in TLA+. Prior to the, the workshop, we did a little bit of free gaming. We seeded the zoo with a few, uh, with a few working examples, um, including the example we worked through with Hill. Um, we recruited uh, approximately eight participants through a variety of internal channels at CrowdStrike. Um, then we solicited uh, those participants for, for problems that they wanted to investigate. Um, and uh, in, case, in case we weren't able to get uh, enough solicitations, uh, enough problems to investigate, um, the four of us seeded the problem set with, um, with some areas that we thought would be very amenable to, uh, to, investigate it, to investigation with, with TLA+. And you can see the, the proposal uh, template on the, on the right. Um, so, um, when we when we held the workshop, um, we uh, we had one day of, of instruction with the four of us and hands-on practice. And I think it's really important to call out the fact that these are uh, that we four are are by no means TLA plus experts either. Um, we um, and we were able to to hold um, to hold a fairly effective internal workshop. Um, after that one day of instruction, we spent uh, three to four days on small group effort on, uh, on, on the problems that I mentioned, building 
building specs. Um, and on the second day, we, we as a group voted on proposals. So um, those, uh, the 12 of us as a, as a group, we voted on proposals, we split into three groups, and each group took one of the proposals to, uh, for modeling and ultimately with the hope that, that that group would be able to build a, uh, um, a useful TLA spec. And then at the end of the week, we, we reconvened and um, uh, each group talked about their experiences to the larger group. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about the three projects that, that, uh, that were selected. Um, the first was a, uh, was a, a, a Kafka topic wrapper that, that, uh, um, that uh, is used in uh, some of our cloud systems. Uh, it's, um, it's focused, uh, the, the wrapper is a, is a library in Golang. Um, this, uh, um, this library and its, um, and its underlying client use Go routines for the, for the concurrent re reads and writes that are, that are done. Um, and over the course of our project, over the course of our, our one week introduction to TLA plus and, and small workshop, two bugs in the library were identified, submitted and fixed. Um, uh, the second project that was, uh, that was, uh, that we did, that we covered in our workshop was, um, uh, a heartbeat tracking system that, um, uh, that's, it's a, uh, it's a small piece of infrastructure in, uh, written in uh, one of the internal domain-specific uh, domain languages uh, in use at CrowdStrike. And um, the implementation uh, tracks the, the overall state of the system by integrating uh, a few sources of information and then emits a regular heartbeat event. Um, and this project was chosen, I should mention that the first, the first project was a, a submission from one of the part, one of the participants, one of the uh, one of outside of the 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 four the four of us that were that were um, uh, planning the workshop. This one, this topic was one that we had seeded uh, into the the problem set, and um, we put that we included that because um, uh, it's something small, it's concurrent, and um, and it's in a in. Uh, um, in the DSL that I mentioned, where um, users often have to uh, reason about concurrency. And lastly, um, this is another project that was that was uh, uh, that that came from one of the the workshop participants. Um, unlike the other two, the uh, the the target the the what we, what the uh, uh, the spec was attempting to model was not an implementation. But it was uh, it was the design of uh, it was a perspective design for a content management system, uh, and in that in that uh, in that modeling effort, we focused on ensuring that that the uh, that expectations on data integrity and availability would be held, and in this case, uh, the the spec writing effort uncovered a, a couple of cases where that didn't hold and. Uh, and so we were able to take those uh, take those parts of the design back to the to the design team, and they were able to change the design to account for for those for those uh, race conditions. So um, overall, by the end, everyone enrolled in the workshop felt comfortable discussing and and building the solutions. Which, for me um, and the other, uh, I think for everyone in the in the effort was a huge success. And more surprisingly. Each one of the selected projects identified a problem of some kind with, with the identified system, either um, uh, a uh, either um, uh, an assumption that wasn't clear that wasn't really clear from from, the, from an implementation, or um, or uh, uh, a race condition, um, and uh, this was actually very surprising to everyone involved because, again. Uh, this is bounded in a week. Um, we are, uh, all of us have a fairly, um, uh, a fairly, I would say, a fairly low level of, of expertise with, with TLA plus, and I think uh, it's a it's a fairly compelling example that minimal investment in time can produce useful and important results. 
So um, I think, um, so um, you might ask what's, what's happened since? Um, we held the workshop in, uh, in late spring, early summer. And um, uh, I think one big question is what happened with the large refactoring effort that, that sort of kicked off our, our um, um, kicked off this, this, this uh, kicked off building the workshop. Um, so that's, that's still going on. Um, and TLA plus modeling remains in a, a very important part of not only the design, uh, but also that, that implementation effort. Um, and it's been uh, invaluable in looking at, uh, looking at expected behavior around uh, global changes in system state, um, system shutdown, uh, uh, things like that. Um, additionally, what came out of that, that large refactoring effort was a synchronization mechanism for, uh, for um, TLA specs that, uh, that model uh, an implementation in, uh, in one of our, uh, our internal DSLs. So um, whenever, uh, if, that, if the corresponding excerpt of code is changed, we immediately know that, that, that the model itself has to, be, has to be updated or at least requires some, uh, some, uh, uh, some human review. Um, uh, lastly, that, that large uh, refactoring effort also uh, has uh, resulted in outreach talks about the successful use of TLA plus to internal, uh, to internal groups focused on, uh, on overall quality within our, our engineering organization. Um, uh, outside of that, there's been some smaller independent writing of, of specs, um, and there's been some growth in, the, in our zoo, but our zoo is still fairly small. Um, going forward, I, I would say that our, that that our organizational involvement with, with TLA plus is not yet self-sustaining. And, uh, and the, I think, active participation in, in, with, uh, in projects with TLA plus since the workshop has been lower than we would have liked. And to, in order to build on previous, on those previous, on that previous success, um, there are a number of things that we've been talking about, including planning a second internal workshop. Um, Originally, when we uh, solicited volunteers, uh, we, uh, we got twice as many volunteers as we felt we could, we could manage in a, in a workshop and still make it and still, uh, and still, have the, and still provide uh, a hands-on uh, learning opportunity. So um, planning a second internal workshop, um, having more uh, internal talks about TLA Plus, uh, uh, planning uh, a bug bash like event of course these are not bugs but um, uh, for but uh, having a, a dedicated half day or day where those of us who had participated in the workshop could could meet and and simply uh, focus on on building out more more uh, more examples for our for our TLA plus spec zoo um, and we're Talking about other other possibility, other possible activities as well. Uh, we have we still have a good amount of momentum, and we want to make sure that it, that uh, instead of instead of degrading over time, we're able to build this into build that momentum into something that is that is ultimately self-sustaining. So, uh, in sum, uh, what has been successful for us, uh, starting with small projects for for building trust. Um, and then also bringing in help at the beginning, uh, I think that was that was fundamentally useful. I, I don't think that uh, I, I think without having um, a common experience, uh, the common experience of of a workshop, um, I, I think it would have been very difficult for for any of this to have to have happened. Um, uh, uh, involving people through the the work that they that they do every day at CrowdStrike um, is was really important. Uh, I think um, it was really important um, for the obvious reason that 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 uh, that 
um, it's directly interesting to the participants, but I think it's also really important because it gave everyone who participated in that, that week-long workshop an opportunity to share and contribute. So for folks, as they were building TLA Plus expertise and may not have felt completely comfortable um, participating immediately in the process of writing a spec, uh, we would, uh, they could still offer a, a lot of assistance because we were working in, in a domain in which they were an expert. So it provided a nice, uh, a, good, um, uh, a good foundation for, for sharing and, um, and collaborating. Um, having some measure of, of bottom-up participation uh, has been really successful. Um, and I should mention again that, uh, that having uh, supportive management was, was incredibly useful, um, both in terms of being able to, uh, being able to propose a project that, um, that incorporated a, a potentially, we didn't actually know how, how much time to reserve for, uh, for a design phase that, that might uh, that might incorporate uh, a substantial amount of, of TLA plus spec writing, as well as committing to a slightly larger project, so that we had um, we had the number of participants in that pro in that in that development effort to actually do the work. Um, but ultimately, um, um, our engineering organization has uh, um, uh, a fairly open a very open ad, uh, open perspective on using the right tool for a given solution, and that has um, resulted in um, uh, a number of um, uh, a number of uh, unusual situations like or maybe not unusual but um, um, atypical situations where we've we've uh, used tools like uh, we've used formal modeling tools like Agda in certain cases to assess the validity of, of data of, of certain data structures and um, uh, and there's a strong belief in that in the in using uh, in picking a, a correct tool and, and making space for things that that uh, that uh, that solve a problem in a useful way so um, lastly, as I mentioned in the last slide, um, ongoing engagement seems to be really, really critical, at least at the, at the nascent stages of, of TLA plus adoption. Um, I think uh, I'm hoping that, uh, that that's something that we can, we, can, uh, uh, we can do effectively and so that our early successes will be, um, will, uh, will expand and uh, um, using, uh, Using TLA Plus will be uh, um, a, uh, a a common step in our in our development process uh, throughout uh, throughout our engineering or organization. So, uh, with that, I'm I'm going to end. Um, thank you all. Thank you for your talk. Um, one thing that I'm particularly interested in is the synchronization between the spec and the systems that depend on it for correctness. Can you share any uh, either tools that you might have used to maintain the synchronization or provide any tips for people who are interested in making their own? Uh, I can't, unfortunately, I can't share the tools, and I, I honest, and they won't, they probably won't be as, even as, um, as useful if we did because uh, the tools that we use for synchronization management are really specific to one of the to uh, a DSL that we use internally. Um, but what I can say is that um, uh, um, um, we're able to isolate a portion of of a file that contains code in that DSL as being relevant to a corresponding um, to a, a corresponding TLA plus spec. And ultimately, what we do is we um, we link um, a hash of 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 that subset to to the model, and we uh, so that if there is a divergence from that, um, we can uh, uh, essentially during our automated uh, testing runs that will be picked up, and so we can 
I wouldn't say immediately, but fairly quickly see that 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 the implementation has has changed in some way. Now that that um, that still requires uh, some human review. It's not a perfect solution, but uh, but it certainly um, over time it, it prevents that it will prevent that drift in that domain. Um, we would have to do something similar in in other areas where we're not using necessarily that that domain specific language. Thank you for your talk. Uh, you mentioned it was uh, one of the key things was having executive support for adopting TLA plus. Uh, I'm curious if you could share more about how one could go about this uh, at a company, you know, especially convincing people to take time away from their day and even, you know, attend a workshop and, you know, have the executives pay for, for said workshop, which I'm sure is not, you know, negligible in cost. That's a really good question. I think, um, so I should mention that when I, um, um, so uh, in the case of, I think a lot of what made this possible was the, the importance and long history that we had with the, the project the, that, that required refactoring. So um, it, um, there was, uh, a clear interest in, in fixing the problems that existed. Um, and there was some awareness of the difficulty of, um, the, the difficulty of, um, of, uh, of finding, reproducing, and correcting those problems when they occur. So um, given that, there was a, certainly a willingness to incorporate uh, a more um, a more rigorous approach in that in that design process, I I don't know if it would have if we would have had the same experience um, with um, with an arbitrary uh, with an arbitrary uh, uh, project. So I think that was um, I think in some sense that that having um, having the institutional desire to address that problem really was what I think provided a, a huge opportunity for us. So, um, and, um, uh, and so um, once, once we had uh, the, once we had the support that uh, uh, for, for incorporating TLA plus, um, the, the workshop was not as, was, uh, getting support for a workshop on top of that was not necessarily as, as difficult as, as you might as you might think. So um, I think um, uh, and in terms of in terms of cost, um, one thing that I think what made uh, one thing that made that a lot more um, more attractive was the possibility that that those of us who participated in the workshop could then share what we learned. Uh, with our peers. You mentioned in the course of the talk uh, using small sample type things to get people better on TLA plus. What was your source for those? Uh, can you share a source for like those uh, small problems? Because if I wanted to try and get TLA plus into my organization, I probably want to adopt the same sort of strategy. Well, um, the 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 small the small samples um, were um, the small samples were things that we wrote in house, and um, we wrote them uh, we wrote them using specific scenarios that we encountered at CrowdStrike. So, um, so in the uh, previously in the talk, uh, I went through the three uh, the three projects that we. That our, uh, that our workshop covered, each of those became one of the examples in our zoo, if that makes sense. So each of them was small enough that um, each, of them, each of those topics, each of those areas uh, was small enough that someone learning TLA plus could, um, could potentially digest it, but it was also complex enough to uh, to validate something useful. So um, 
that's that's how we uh, that's how we uh, that's how we went about finding these examples. I think that there are, there are lots of really good small examples around, and but having some that were that actually demonstrated um, that actually demonstrated uh, TLA plus as applied to the problems that we have at CrowdStrike that uh, was was really uh, extraordinarily helpful. Questions in the chat? No? Okay. Then I guess we thank our speaker again. Thank you, Mike. Thank you all for having me.